Radharasudanidhi class, starting a new verse, 266. And again, this we're continuing with, with the theme of the glories of Vrindavan. And Radharani, you can't separate Radharani from Vrindavan. Practically every single verse of Radharasudanidhi has the word Radha inside the verse. It has something about Vrindavan. So this is verse 266. Yad Radha Para Kinkari. Let's see. Yad Radha Para Kinkari Krita Vida. Sam Yobhavid Gocharam. Deyam Naiva Kadapi Yad Radivina. Tasya Kripas Sparshata. Yat Primam Rita. Sindhusara rasadam papaika vajam api tad brindavana dusprevesha mahima ascharya ridhi spurjato Translation May the wonderful glories of Vrindavan that are very difficult to enter into but are fully known uh, One second On the left hand side, where that orange cord is, far left. Yeah, that's the volume control. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. Just turn it down one. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, okay. That's good, thank you. It's a master volume. I think it was too loud. I'll, I'll start again, 266. May the wonderful glories of Vrindavan that are hard to enter into. Mm. Okay, by where the orange cord is, there's a volume switch. On the left-hand side, the orange cord? No, the orange cord, yeah. Radhe, 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 Radhe. Turn it all the way to the left till it comes off. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. No, that's the master. The big one's the master. Now, right next to the microphone. Yeah, just, just turn it. Radhe, 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 Radhe. No. One net by, the, by the wire, you know where the wire goes in? Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, turn it to the left. All the way to the left. Hare Krishna. Hmm. Well, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, you can maybe. Yeah, do that. Yeah, turn it a little bit to the right. Yeah, okay. That's that's good. Can you hear it? Okay, good. Cause that. Now this is uh, 266. May the wonderful glories. See, see, there's the microphone. See the microphone jack? Yeah, now to the left of that. Yeah, that. Now turn all the way to the left, all the way to the left. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. See, it's up. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Okay. That's good. Everyone can hear? And no. <laughs> Let's try again. May the wonderful glories of Vrindavan, that are very hard to enter into, but are fully known by the great souls who carry the mood of Radha's mandris or maidservants, kinkaris, in their hearts. That can never be meditated upon, the wonderful glories of Vrindavan, that is. They can never be meditated upon within the heart unless one receives Radha's mercy. And that is the essence of the ocean of nectary and love, rasa, ever manifest. Will, no, he's saying, will it, will the magnificent glories of Radharani and Vrindavan and her love somehow manifest in the heart of a complete sinner like me? That's what he's saying. He's saying that I'm a, a complete sinner like me. So here, uh, some introduction I wrote to the, to the commentary. He said, the transcendental glories of Vrindavan are very difficult to understand in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. How is it? that in the tikas of the Bhagavatam, the Supreme Personality of God and Bhagavan is stealing yogurt and butter, and when he doesn't get any fresh yogurt or butter, then he, uh, he passes urine in the person's house. So the question is, God passes urine? Mutra, the word is mutra in Sanskrit. Yes. And then in the Dasmaskanda, maybe 55th chapter, it talks about the birth of Pradyumna, Pradyumna. And there it explains how Dwarkadish placed his uh, re retaha, 
he placed his semen in the womb of Rukmini, which is the way children are born in this world, in the Nara Lila, human Lila of you and I. So that's even told. So these, obviously these are very difficult to understand points of reality in the Leelas of Krishna, especially in Vrindavan. At least in Dwarka, Krishna is a king and basically doing everything right. He's a Maryada. He's in the mood of Maryada, following the rules. Even when he kidnapped, when Krishna kidnapped Rukmini, and uh, that was quite intimate, and they weren't married. It was almost like a Gandharva marriage. Threw her on the chariot and fought for her. And then at that time he said, Oh, look, Rukmini, see how, you're, see how your army is defeating the enemies. And they haven't been combined yet in marriage, and already Krishna's placing the possession of his army in the hands of his queen, Rukmini, number one, Mukya Mahishi. Look, look how your soldiers are driving away the, the friends of Shishupal and all the allies. And Rukmini heard that and said, oh, this is very nice. I'm already in. <laughs> he won't throw me off the chariot halfway to Dwarka or change his mind. <laughs> but at any rate, so once they got to Dwarka, then Rukmini s said, wait a minute, you know, don't touch me. So then uh, she waited and uh, some, somewhere, I don't know where, but then uh, a formal marriage was arranged and all the proper Vedic rituals, although technically by uh, any man who <laughs> picks up a woman and kidnaps her and runs away with her, that he has to marry her, it's automatic. But nevertheless, she observed the protocol and the, the uh, yama, niyama, or yama, niyam, of the uh, Vedic vivaha yagya. But in, <laughs> in Vrindavan, the same Krishna, Purnatam Bhagavan Sri Krishna Vrindavan, there's no rules. He, whatever rules there are, he breaks them. If there's, no, if there's no rule, he makes a new rule. It's called the rule of independence, the rule of free love, the rule of do what I want. This is my kingdom. And as Christians say in the Bible, uh, our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will shall be done. So this is Krishna's kingdom. This is his will, whatever his itcha, whatever his fancy is. Whatever his fancy or will is, he, he expresses it with all of his devotees and they willingly accept his, his uh, intimations and his wishes. So in this, uh, so I'm just saying that this, the glories of Vrindavan are difficult, but by, by Radha's mercy, even a sinner can taste a drop of the nectar of the ocean of love called Vrindavan, Vrindavan to be exact. <laughs> the pronunciation has changed with the influx of non-Hindus, <laughs> although it was originally Vrindavan. Even Indians now say, I'm going to Vrindavan. <laughs> you know, all my Indian friends for 30 years have said, it's Vrindavan, not Vrindavan. <laughs> I said, but your own taxi driver. So line one, he's saying in line one, let's look at line one in the Sanskrit. Yadpada pada, yadpada pada kinkari, that's us. So basically every verse is about us, Radha and Vrindavan, and Prem and Seva. What else is there in the life of a devotee? There's the Ishtadevata, and there's the Seva, and there's the, uh, the Sadak, the Sadya, the Sarana and the Sadak. Sadak. Yad Radha Pada Kinkari Krita Rida Samyag Bhavet Gocharam which simply means when will Radharani, this Kinkari, this foot maiden, as a translator generally they say handmaiden, but somehow the tra a translator I was thinking, generally the word kinkari or dasi or anacharani or paricharani all mean a maidservant, a dasi of a, of a queen or of another lady, exalted cultured lady. So Radharani generally is translated in English as handmaiden. But uh, actually, I, now I understand, <laughs> because uh, it just dawned on me that the uh, translator, who is my Shiksha Guru, one of them, his particular service is Charan Seva, and he translates his word, Kinkri, as foot maiden. <laughs> and I, after reading this book since whenever it was published, 80, I don't know, 89 or 91, I've been reading it. He gave it to me. This is a photocopy of a Xerox Vrindavan binding. It's all yellow. <laughs> uh, 
Because generally any other English translation, translator will say handmaiden. He said, I said, foot, I was looking at the verse, foot maiden? I said, but, so I changed it, handmaiden, <laughs> maidservant. And then just now I thought, oh yeah, because <laughs> that's his Nitya Seva, Charan Seva, black dye painting, many, many things. So he's, and it's not wrong because, and moreover that's the attitude is more correct. To say I'm a servant of your hands is not as humble to say as saying I'm a servant of your feet. So our place is there, because it says Radha Pada Kinkari. I'm a Pada Kinkari, I'm not a Hatha. This is Hatha or Kara. It doesn't say Radha Kara Kinkari. <laughs> Never. It always says Radha Pada Kinkari. If nothing else, I'll get a sore neck at the end of the This thing is not adjusted. It's adjusted, but it's Indian now, so it kind of goes like that. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. So the, uh, it always says, Radhapada Kinkari. That's our place at the feet. The feet are our everything. The feet of Guru, Guru Charana Padma, Sri Guru Par Charana Padma, and the feet of Radharani and Krishna Charana Padma. We meditate on them, we worship them, we dream about them, we pray to them, and by the mercy of their feet, they'll take us across this, this vast distance. Remembering Radha and Krishna's feet will we'll quickly traverse the ocean of Baba Sindhu just like a child skipping over the footprint of a calf, a vatsapad, in the, in the uh, kissin. So, this first line, yad rara bada kinkri, krita rida samyag bhavat gocharam. It means, when will Radharani, when will she bestow her mercy, dhyayam? When, when will her mercy become visible in my heart? And the second line, what I say? Oh, what on my note was, who knows, who knows and actually experiences the true glory of Vrindavan? Prabhupada Saraswati says, who, those devotees that are absorbed in Kinkari Bhav, in that very humble, sweet, tender mood of a maidservant, they can understand something about the true glory of Vrindavan. They can see the real Vrindavan within their heart, the Braja Mahimam. So how is that? Why is that? Why is it that someone that takes the lowest position can understand the highest reality of Vrindavan? Because that's what it takes. It's only by humility you can understand the kingdom of Prema. Because the basic energy that's, that the whole kingdom of Prema is resting on is humility, humble service, humble attitude. There's no ego there. Where is ego in Krishna and Radha? There's no such thing. Radha's feet are everything to Krishna, and Krishna's feet are everything to Radha. And there's so many paintings, everyone is very keen to buy these paintings of Krishna hold, cherishing, with loving hands cherishing Radharani's feet, or Krishna's blue hands tying an ank ankle bells on Radharani's golden feet. Everybody goes, every true Raghunuga Bhakta goes mad when he sees that. Because that's the perfection, serving the feet of Radharani. Even Krishna finds his perfection there. And Krishna goes to all kinds of extents to find out about the love of Radharani. He takes an entire incarnation, a Mahaprabhu, to find out what is the love of Radharani. And even before that, in Krishna Leela, he adopted so many female dresses, so many times he became a, he became a Saki to understand, to be close to Radharani, to touch her feet, to paint her feet, to sell her some ankle belts or some, some, some uh, toe rings or some kunkum or anything. Like Prem, I was just reading uh, Prem Samput by Vishnu Chakravarti last night. I couldn't put it down. Unbelievable. It's the most unbelievable expose and, uh, on love that you ever, you ever if, you want, if, you forget, if you're forgetting what love is because we're living in a world of hate, we're living in a world of terrorism and hate and exploitation. It's Kali Yuga. It's to be expected, but it's hard to swallow and hard to digest. But when, when reading, it's very good to a refre, a pre, um, love refresher course. We have refresher courses. Okay, you get an MBBS now, but if you want to keep, up, keep abreast of the changing medical field and medicines, you have to always take upgrading your courses and learning more so you're you're a progressive, modern doctor and successful. You have to always gain more knowledge. You know, degree is not enough. It keeps on going. 
So the same thing with Prema, Radha Krishna Prema. I found, I haven't read the book for oh, 20 years or something. And I read it, and I, of course, every, every time you read an old, old book, you, you're not old. You're new. Your consciousness is new. And it's always changing and expanding. So I read it last night. I'm, I couldn't believe it. How Radharani is speaking, having dialogue with, with this uh, celestial nymph, as it's translated. Krishna disguised himself as the most demure and tender and beautiful uh, lady, seemingly like a celestial, like a Gandharva, and showed up one day, and it just seems rather unusual, but she showed up one day standing in the courtyard of, at, at Jatila's house in Yavat. This Leela takes place in Yavat. So go to, take Prem Samputa with you and go to Yavat and uh, chant 16 rounds in front of the deities, Yavat Bihari, Radha Yavat Bihari, and then, then finish that and pray, take your Guru's mercy in your heart, then go under some tree in the courtyard there, there used to be one, or, and then read Prem Samput. That would be my, my uh, prescription <laughs> for a love-worn heart. If you have a love-worn heart or you're not feeling so well, then take Prem Samput and go to Yavat. So there this beautiful, this beautiful celestial lady, like a Gandharva, shows up in Radharani's courtyard in Yavat. You can move up a little bit, because my wish is if you move up, then more people will move in. <laughs> Come closer. I, I liked you. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I'm not that bad. <laughs> you're, you're good. So if you get lo close to me, I'll, maybe I'll become good. <laughs> So there this beautiful celestial lady is standing in the courtyard at Yavit. So beautiful, nose ring. And her head is cast down and she's just looking away so shyly. You can't even imagine the modern world because modern women and shyness are oceans apart. <laughs> There's an ocean apart between a modern woman and, and Laja. <laughs> so this woman is Krishna and she, says, she wants, this is Prem Samput I'm describing by Vishnu Chakvaripad. And She's standing there, and, and Lalita says, oh, <laughs> imagine, imagine one day you walk in your, going, going out of your bedroom, and you walk in your living room, and there's some stranger standing there. <laughs> oh, hello, well, what are you doing here? So that's how it's described. That one, day, one day, suddenly appearing, one day, suddenly appearing in the courtyard of Radharani in Yavit, which means her royal court, uh, palace, which was built by her father, which is just north of her uh, husband's, uh, so-called husband's house, which is rather small, and Bishop Bauer didn't think that was appropriate for his daughter, so he built a big palace right next to it. <laughs> and that's Radharani's quarters, and behind it is the little quarters of Abhimanyu and Katila, Jatila. And now you see some little brick building, but in the Leela, this is described. So Radharani's there, and then Lita says, oh, there's a very beautiful, looks like a Gandharva, so, so radiant, so beautiful, but so shy. She's standing in the courtyard. Really? Oh, well, bring her to me. So then they, they took her by the arm and she had her, her head was covered, and looking down, looking like this. And, and then, so Radharani said, oh. And then, so Radha, first few verses, Radharani's glorifying this beautiful celestial damsel who is Krishna, disguised as a gopi. And then she says, and then, so Radharani's glorifying this lady but actually, because it's Krishna, it's all glorification of Krishna. So, and so Radharani is saying, I've never seen such a beautiful lady before. Your sham varna, your, your bluish complexion is so radiant. I'm amazed. And your ornamentation. I, I, and she goes on and on, all these adjectives and superlatives to glorify this lady that just showed up one day in her courtyard. And, uh, and, the, and Krishna, <laughs> Krishna says, Krishna, you know, that late Krishna, Krishna, <laughs> the female Krishna, she's looking down and drinking, <laughs> drinking the nectar through her ears. Like, oh, wow. And then said, so where have you come from? And so the whole time, the lady's silent. The, girl, the young girl's young lady is silent. Where have you come from? What is your name? Why aren't you speaking? <laughs> and there's all and going on. Radharani's saying so many things, so many things. And while she's saying that, she's saying, did your lover, perhaps your lover left you and you're feeling lonely? Is that why you're not speaking? You're feeling so dejected that you came here today to, find, to meet me and, 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 and open your heart to me? Are you feeling like that? I understand how you feel. You know, I, I feel so much love for my own 
beloved, my Shamasundar. But sometimes, you know, he doesn't come and, and then Krishna is saying, yeah, yeah. Because uh, Vishnu opens the whole description of Prem Samput by saying that uh, Krishna always, he said, I, 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 I don't know, but he said it's the nature of Nayak, of the hero, of the man, to want to, he wants to hear, he wants to hear how much his beloved loves him. It, it, secretly, so eavesdrop or hear some ladies talking and, Oh, oh my, and the wife says, oh, my husband's so nice, is that? Oh, yeah, I'm so nice. <laughs> so this is Prem Samput. So I was, we were just explaining this verse is about Vrindavan. And who knows the true glories of Vrindavan? So I read that last night, so it came in the class. So it's saying, he said that the Kinkaris, they can know. And I said, how can they know? And I said, they can know. Because Saraswati Pada is saying, he's saying in this verse, he's saying, he says that Radhapada Kinkari, the maidservants at Radharani's feet, they can understand. The Chokidara is there. Relax. He's there. Unless somebody latched the door. Is that the door latched? Sometimes they latch, they forget they latch the door. I don't know. Anyway. So he said, I'm saying, how is it how is it that no one can really know the love of Vrindavan except the Kinkaris, the Radhapada Kinkaris, the foot maidens of Radharani? Because they've taken this humble position. I was explaining the relationship between humility and prema. Then from prema I went into talking about prema samput and telling that it gives the ideal definition and explanation of prema. And reading the book Prema Samput serves as a good refresher if you, ref if you forget what is real love. Or if you don't know what real love is, if you re read Prem Samput in a dialogue between the supreme lovers, Radha and Krishna, then you will get it, you and I or whoever, will get an understanding of what is Krishna Prem, what is Radha Govinda Yugo Prem. It's, to, it's openly displayed there in the form of dialogues and glorifications and heart-rending statements. So that's the first line. And then the second line, he says that... Uh, the second line he's saying, Deyam Deyma Kadapi Ridya Vina Tasya Kripa Samsparsha. He says that this, this love will only manifest in the heart of someone, first, that's in Kinkari Bhav, and second, that someone has received the mercy of Radharani. Only by the touch of Radha's Kripa can one meditate upon Vrindavan and the Radha Govinda Leelas. Once when I asked my guru, I said how to pray and what to pray for, and he said, just pray for mercy. This is what we need. We have to pray for mercy. Everywhere, whoever you see, wherever you go, pray for mercy. Please bless me. Even once I was asking about the meaning of Diksha Mantras, <laughs> he gave a very simple meaning one time. We had different discussions. And he said, and talking about Panchatattva Mantras, and practically all of them, even Gopal Mantra and Kam Gayatri. Oh, Krishna, please, please bless me. Please engage me in your service. And please give me your mercy. Of course, they have so many different meanings and deep meanings, which he's also explained. But basically, he always mentions this point, we're simply beggars for mercy. We're simply beggars for mercy. And if you really enter the mood of begging in a genuine way, it's not easy to genuinely beg. Because if you genuinely beg, it means you have to reach deep, beyond your mind, beyond your words. You have to reach deep into your heart. Because you can't beg for mercy unless you realize deeply, unless you realize, and realize deeply that I need it. I need it. I have nothing without mercy. I am nothing without mercy. And I'll attain nothing without mercy my big, big brain, my big, big memory, my big, big birth, it means nothing. It means nothing. It's only just a, a mercy, a drop of mercy. That will make it happen. So the whole, the whole idea of, of any, you know, about life in general is putting yourself in the right position to get the advantage you want. <laughs> you think about it in terms of business or anything. Putting yourself in the right position to get the advantage you want. You, the advantage you want is to become a doctor when you're 18 or 19. So you put yourself in a position to get the advantage you want. 
You go to university, you get a degree, you get qualification, you start practicing. Oh, Dr. Sharma, here I am. So putting yourself in a position where you get the mercy, which means submission, sharanagati. That's the position. The position is sharanagati, surrender, which is easy. Surrender, sharanagati. Anyone can say. Who can live, who can breathe, who can feel, who can do? It takes lifetimes to surrender. <laughs> oh, Krishna, <laughs> I, I surrender unto you. Please give me your mercy. I just published a little prayer. <laughs> this is, it's over on the table. It's a little, oh, Krishna, <laughs> that was what I realized. After <laughs> in this life, after 40 years of trying to be a devotee, I throw my hands up in the air. I stand behind Draupadi. I stand behind Draupadi Mataji, Srimati Draupadi, and I say, Oh, Krishna, I, sur I surrender. <laughs> and there's a, there's a way of saying something like, and I can say, Will you please leave the place? And I can say, Get the hell out of here. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I mean, I, basically, I'm, the same directive is there to leave this place. <laughs> Jao. But uh, it's the way you say it. So, you know, when you, I surrender. So try, try to imagine how, just try to imagine, it's so famous in the Govinda, Govinda Dhamadar Stotram by Bilva Mangala Thakur. There's, he sings that, Govinda Dhamo Dharamara Veti, like that song. So there he's talking about Draupadi. So imagine, how, how did she chant these three names? These three, this vert, this whole Stotram, this comes from the Bhagavatam. This is from Vira Hagit. Virahagita in Bhagavatam is Dasma Skanda, chapter 39. When the gopis, when Krishna is leaving on the chariot to go to Mathura with Akrura, then the gopis are all, they're looking at, looking at each other and so many dialogues they're having with Vish, Vishwanath Chakravarti and Tikas, he opens up the dialogues and, and explains what they're talking and saying to Krishna, which is not in the Sanskrit exactly. And then they say, we have to do something, but we can't do anything. If this, our love is secret. If we let oh, our mothers are here, our fathers, uh, our husbands, everyone's standing here to, to say goodbye to Krishna. He's going to Matura for the wrestling match. And they're wishing him well. And Nanda Baba is going, and he's the king, he's the king of our region. So the king goes somewhere with the, with the Yuvaraj. The Yuvaraj and the king are going somewhere. The Yuvaraj is Krishna. And Balaram is the Yuvaraj of Vasudeva. And the Krishna and Balaram are going to Matura for the... The Dana Yogya, the wrestling. So everyone's there. Not, oh, the king's going to Mathura. Okay, well, you know. <laughs> no, everyone comes out like this uh, Independence Day in Delhi. Everyone comes out to see the prime minister and all these things. So this is natural. It's, it's a feeling one has for the king, especially if they love him. So the, everyone was there, and the Gopi is saying, We have to do something. We can't let the, No one's doing anything. We have to do something. He's just boarding the chariot, and no one's stopping the horses. We sh we should kill, the, shoot the horses, or, or you know, or do something. So then, and and they say, yeah, but if we if we say anything, everybody will know what's going on. You know, be quiet. You know, so far so far we're we're good. You know, no one knows. It's it, it's a rahasya sambanda. It's a secret relationship. So then, finally, at the last moment, they could, they were just exploding with desperation. Govinda Damo Dharamadaveti. That's in the line of the, of the verse. Govinda Damo Dharamadaveti. So how do they say Govinda? How do they say Damadar? How do they say Madhava? Meditate on that. Think about that. Because that's what exactly what Draupadi said. The same three words. Govinda Damadar Madhav. And each one of those words is, has a meaning directly re related to someone who's surrendering. Govinda Damadar Madhav. Govinda Dhamma Madhav. So to say those words, O oh Krishna, O oh Dhamma O oh Govinda, I surrender. It's the, it's the way you say it. It's, it's the heart behind it. It's the depth of the feeling. It's the depth of the genuineness of your feeling of, I've had it. There's nothing in this world for me. I have nothing. I want nothing. Everything is empty. It's all dust and sand and meaningless. Please. Then Krishna says, Oh, Acha, you're calling me? If you get to that point, then he may take notice. Not that he reciprocates. <laughs> Not that he reciprocates, but he takes notice. He looks, he goes, 
Someone's thinking about surrendering? <laughs> and, then if, and then if it, because, okay, I did it once. I got really sincere and surrendered for one day. The next day, I, I was nowhere. And Krishna was bye-bye. He was elsewhere. We were nowhere and he was elsewhere. <laughs> so we have to, it's a daily thing, crying day after day. Like how, how long, do, what, just like every mother, she has a certain breaking point. How, how many cries does it take till you respond to your baby? <laughs> he cries, wah, that's okay. Wah, wah, ah, that's okay. There's a certain breaking point, you know, 10 cries, you know, 27, 19, 4. When you're first married, first kid, it's like the first cry, you run. And the second kid, it's the 10th cry. And the third kid, it's, you don't even run. <laughs> And the fourth kid, you don't even care. <laughs> so it's like that. It's, it's the intensity. And then, and then you respond. So you're a human and having a relationship with your child. So Krishna has a relationship with us. We're his children. So we go, well, ah, God, help me. Ah, yeah, this, this is a good show. I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing I'm, you know, this, uh, what do they call it? With the Chopra with Radharani. Yeah, this, I only cried once. Wow, wow. Ah. Oh, Radharani, I don't know. This guy's going to shut up. I need to tell the guy to shut up. <laughs> so that's what it means. We come to Vrindavan. Vrindavan is a place to cry. It's so dry that if you cry, it may become a little wet. <laughs> that's why it's so dry here. So... Radharani specifically made this place, the air is very dry, the earth is very dry, so that millions of people can come here and cry oceans of tears of surrender, and still the ground won't become muddy. Still the ground won't become muddy. If millions of bhaktas and millions of everyone comes here, wow, oh, Radha, Radha, Krishna. All, maybe all the kuns will fill up, and Yamuna will start flowing in Vrindavan from all the tears of the devotees. And all the kuns will fill up and all the lakes and rivers and, and rivers will fall down from Govardhan and from uh, Tapavan and, all, and K Kedarnath and Bajrinath, uh, Adi Bajrinath and rivers will be seen again flowing down these hills as they were in Krishna's time from the tears. But the ground won't be muddy. You can still do dandavats and still do parikama. <laughs> it's unlimitedly dry. <laughs> so this is Vrindavan. So by only by the touch of Radha's Kripa can one meditate upon Vrindavan and Radha Govinda Leelas. Yat Prem Amrita Sindhu Sararasadam Papaika Bhajamapi. So this is, here's the contrast in one line. There's a contrast. There's Radha in one line, the Saraka in the other, in half the line. Prem Amrita Sindhu Sararasadam. Radharani is the essence of nectar and love, rasas. Papa, I can be bhajam. And who am I? I'm a papi. I, 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 it's, a glorif it's a contrasting the position of the fallen sadaka. Where are we? <laughs> where is Vrindavan and where, where am I? Oh, Vrindavan, you are the essence. Because well, this is actually glorification of Radharani is what I said. But the author is intending to glorify Radharani. Vrindavan, which contains all of this. Brinda he's glorifying Vrindavan. Vrindavan, you're the place, Prem Amrita Sindhu, Sara Rasadam. You're that, you're that unlimited, what is he, how's the translation? He says, the, uh, Vrindavan is the essence of the ocean of nectarian love. Or so is Radharani. Radharani is also the essence, the Sar, the essence of nectarian love. For Krishna, so this is especially a prayer to Vrindavan. All these lines are basically glorifying Vrindavan. So he says, "You're like Vrindavan. You're like this, and I'm here in Vrindavan, visiting or staying for some time or all time or whatever time. But I'm a papi. This is Prabodhananda Saraswati. I'm sitting here in Vrindavan on the banks of Yamuna, under this Kali Kadamba tree, Kaliyadaha. I'm doing my bhajan. I'm watching the Yamuna go by." I'm seeing the saras, the beautiful birds standing there on the, on the banks, 
eating fish, and I'm seeing the, the ducks and swans gliding in the Amuna, and the beautiful birds darting about the trees. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm such a sinner. I'm so fallen. There's everywhere, there's premas flowing everywhere. Liquid premas flowing everywhere. Even one, there's one Hindi bhajan where one person told me, he said that Vrindavan is so extraordinary that prem, that prem is, even the, even the nalis, what we call nalis, or the gutters of Vrindavan are carrying liquid prem. That's a pretty high vision. I mean, these are the nalis carrying all the run, runaway water, wastewater from people's houses. He said, I see, I, and this is his vision, his dristi, that there's prem everywhere, even the nalis, even the, the open, what we call open sewers. <laughs> when Western people come, they say, there's open sewers there in Vrindavan. No, the nali, the drain, because it's just, that's what's in it, and it's open, and that's, that's a no-no <laughs> in Switzerland or anywhere else. They're all under the, it's all the same. It's uh, running on top of the ground or running under the ground. It's the same Stank, stench. So he had this vision. So this is the glorification of Vrindavan. So then he's saying that, he's saying, O Vrindavan, you are the essence of the ocean of nectar and love ras. And me? Who am I? I am a papi. Papi means I'm sinful. And then line four, then line, he says it's very difficult. In line four he says it's very difficult to understand the astonishing glories of Vrindavan Dham. How does he say? This is a little difficult, it's on two verses. He says, Tad Brindavanam dush, dush Pravesh. This is pretty simple. It's like Hindi. Pravesh means Griya Pravesh, Mandir Pravesh. Difficult to enter. The Mahima, Ascharya Mahima. The glories of Brindavan are Ascharya Mahima. Ascharya means astonishing, amazing, inconceivable. Ascharya. It's like, what is Ascharya? Ascharya is like, wow. Is that Ascharya? I mean, these words always, Adbut. Chamatkar and Ascharya. It's like, I don't, I'm not a master of the language. These, these words all have a similar, similar meaning. Adbut, amazing. And Chamatkar, you know, wondrous. And, as, and then Ascharya. I always think of Ascharya because it's Ascharya and Ascharya. Astonishing. Astonishing, and it, for Russian people, they probably don't know what any of those words mean, but whatever. But the basic idea is the experience is like, is it like, is it like this? This is the dramati dramatization of the word. It's like, what am I seeing? But, and, but, but, but it's astonishing in a good sense. It's not like you see some monster movie where you become, ah, <laughs> you know, you become uh, amazed that, that the Gona Ras is there, uh, Vibatsa, or what is it? Gora, 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 uh, Gona Ras is, you know, Hara, Hara, and disgust, and like that, and they're not even part of Madhurya Ras, so those two Rasas, Gora, Gora, or whatever it is, and uh, Vibatsa, disgusting, uh, Jugupshita, Jugupshita means disgust, that doesn't, that's not part of the Madhurya Bhav and Vrindavan, although it's one of the seven secondary Rasas. But this astonishing, Ascharya means that it, it's amazing and I'm drawn to it and I'm amazed by it. I, 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 can't understand, I can't figure it out. I'm attracted. It's amazing. You know, like, what is it and what's happening? Is it like this? This is Ascharya. You, you got the idea? This, <laughs> acting out words. <laughs> so they have to, the idea is, so he says, Vridi spurjato, spurjato, jati, jat. When will this vision, when will this vision become born, appear in my heart, in my riddhi? This true vision of Vrindavan as it is, not, with the kunjas everywhere. Because even it, when we have that heart and we have that mercy, we don't, we don't see any buildings, we don't see any cars, we don't see anything. We just, we're in our own, we see the reality of the real Vrindavan. The whole thing opens up to us. And we don't go anywhere. We just sit and we see it all in front of us. There's one, one of in my Guru Prampara, there's one Baba, Siddha Ekazar Ad Siddha Manohar Das Baba from Govinda Kund. He wrote one book in Hindi about his sporties of Radha and Krishna Leela. And his uh, biography is Nobel Kapoor's book, very small biography. 
Siddha Manohar does. He lived it was around 1890, 1870 to 19. 1880, around 1940, 50, I think he left, something like that, 60. But there he wrote, uh, he, would, he would just, he, would, he had a cave on, by Govinda Kun underneath the ground. He just stayed there all day, all day. He only came out, some disciples begged Madhukari, he took Madhukari. He's in a cave all day chanting. And he was having so many uh, Leela Praveshas, entering the Leelas, and many, 20, 30 different. And he, and he would wake up and he would write down his, experience, his experiences of Krishna's uh, leelas. So obviously Vrindavan opened up for him and showed the real Vrindavan. He's just sitting in a black cave. <laughs> he's, you know, caves are, there's no light. I mean, under the ground. His eyes are closed. He's there and with his friends and all the scorpions and cobras or whatever is down there. <laughs> They're busy sleeping and he's busy meditating. So everyone's busy. No one's bothering anybody. So, that's Krishna's in everyone's heart. So these, you go in the Himalayas, these sadhus live there. It's just like that. Who can understand? We're, we're controlled by fear. But sadhus, saintly people, are controlled by God. It's like that. <laughs> so they, that's not easy to be a saintly person. They're very rare. Manushanam sahasreshu kaschit yadati siddhye. So there are <laughs> thousands of regular people and hardly, very few are siddhas. So there's an example of someone had riddhi sport, sporjato, riddhi in his heart, sporty, sporties were manifesting in his heart. What to speak of Das Goswami, everyone can open up Vilaf Gusamanjali. Or even this book, last uh, Kartik, and we'll get to that, so many, sport, so many visions come and these few verses we're hearing just to appreciate the great ocean of uh, Lila that we'll enter into. We have we're following the footsteps of Prabhupada and the Saraswati to to glorify Vrindavan. So sometimes he's praying in Sadaka Vesh. For whom? For us. He's an Nitya Parishad. He's the eternal Saki, Tongavidya Saki. He doesn't need to do bhajan. <laughs> he's, he's he's doing his seva. So many sevas. He's not walking around with a mala. Oh. I have to pick these flowers. It's not like us. We walk around with our mala and pick flowers. We walk around with our mala and make flowers. We chant and drive. <laughs> that, that's for the sadhaka. But he's a siddha. He's only doing seva. No mala. <laughs> he's just doing seva. The hands are busy. His hands are busy doing seva. No time to go. And he's, he's sitting there in the corner. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Radharani, what are you doing? <laughs> go, go pick some flowers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's their their engagement. So this is uh, it's very this is so this is verse uh, four. They're very difficult to understand the glories of Vrindavan, but by living in Vrindavan, serving here, and we're living here and we're serving here because we're placing ourselves, as I mentioned, in a place to get advantage. So you, you, you want some benefit, so you put yourself in a position where you get the greatest advantage. So when you come to Vrindavan, we're situated here, and this is a place where we can get mercy. From home, from the living reservoirs of mercy, the sadhus, the saintly persons. And they're always coming to Vrindavan, especially in this time of the year, Kartik, and especially in a place like Radhakund. I've been informed by SMS that the uh, Nityananda Vamsacharya, one of them, there are many, but one of the ones that many people know, Nityananda Vamsacharya, Srila uh, Ekazar Ad, Srila Prem Gopal Goswamiji Maharaj, he, he'll be across the street at 5.30 giving lecture, I believe so. You, every, is that correct? 5.30? I can't hear what she's saying. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. At six o'clock, so uh, I don't know where everyone will sit, but uh, come and see what Nitai arranges for you. <laughs> Seoul is so small, but well, that's a small place. I don't know, whatever. And maybe they have speakers or sit here and listen. They have a speaker over here or something. I don't know what, what the plan is. I don't know. So like that. So uh, this this great devotee, he's a, an acharya and a great guru and great personality. 
he was traveling, last year he was traveling all around the world, and I, I read somewhere, maybe I'm wrong, but he, his visa to uh, Russia was denied. He wanted to go to Russia, is that right? Anyone know? He, apl he recently he applied for a visa he couldn't get. So it, it's not easy to get the, what I'm trying to say, it's not easy to get the darshan of these great souls because, you know, these embassies are really uptight about giving visas to Indian devotees, you know, Russian enemies. So I heard like that. So here he is right in India and all the Russian devotees are thinking, oh, I wish I was in India, I could see Gurudev, or I could see this great devotee, you know, and, and he's right here. So I don't know, I'll try my luck and see if I can get in. But <laughs> I can go on my roof and look through the window or something. <laughs> Actually, on my veranda, I can see through the front door of the temple. I can maybe even see, I don't know if I can see, I can see something, but I don't know. So this, what I'm saying is this is the place to get the mercy in Vrindavan. Because devotees here, the people that live here permanently, the sadhakas and the saints, they're not doing anything but crying and begging for mercy. And of all those thousands of devotees and all the various sampradayas living here and crying and begging for mercy and doing various sadhanas, some of them have actually received the mercy of the Lord. And some of them are actually radiating and emanating the true kripa of Radha and Krishna. So if you see them or meet them or hear from them, then that, that, that wonderful wave of kripa washes over your mind and heart through their words, through their glance, through their mercy, and through their blessings. So they're all around everywhere. So we have, I know, because I'm going to class at 5 o'clock. I don't know what time it is even. What time is it? Oh, 15 minutes. So, <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to class, so I get some mercy too. <laughs> so, because it, it's, it's happening, because my Gurudev is usually not in Radhakund. He's, el he's elsewhere. Not in Russia, but not in Radhakund. <laughs> so now it's easy. Otherwise, it's a little more difficult. It takes a few hours to see him otherwise. But here, it's only a few minutes. So this is, uh, it's all about getting mercy. I know in, in Bengali, every day in Radhakund, since 20 years, there's about five different classes every day, uh, scheduled at different times. And it's deliberately done like that, five or six Used to be a Natadas class at three to four, then four to five, then Shamasundar, then Vaishnapada, then eight, then eight o'clock to nine o'clock again, or nine to ten, or again at night in a Dharma shala where everyone's staying. Anantadas would speak, Srila Natadas Panaji. He would speak there in the afternoon, and again at night he would go there. Uh, up until about five, six years ago. Now he's a little like uh, not good health. So I said, the Bengali just come and they go from class, they go to a few classes and eat some. Prasad sleep in the afternoon, think about what they heard, wake up and, and do prikma, take snot, then go to class, 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 and take dinner and take rest. Five, six classes every day. They really, from the best, most advanced Rasik, you know, Janas in, in the Radhakund. This is Bengali. And some are translated in English also. Srila uh, Nathadas, you can hear English, Hindi translation, radio, you know. So this is uh, a place to get mercy. So this is the, uh, the essence of love. It is a secret of Vrindavan, Braja Prem Ras. It will manifest in the heart of the sadhaka. So here he's praying for a sporty, a vision, an inner darshan, a direct experience. We should pray to see Krishna. Sometimes some people say, no, don't pray to see Krishna. It's like, like, someone's father, someone has a mother, but they never met their father. It's natural they want to see their father and meet their father. The father, they may be born, and the father is working overseas for many years. And then after five years, they say, where is dad? I want to see my father. Yes, yes, he's coming. After, after five years, he'll come. Okay. So it's natural. We want, it's, it's a natural. We want to see who we're trying to love. <laughs> if you're trying to love someone day and night, Meditating, we have little mortis and you're worshipping them. You want to see them, you want to feel them, you want to hear them, you want to be with them. So, and it's, it's, it should drive us on. It's, I want to see, Krishna, I want to see you. Show, okay, I'm seeing my murti, I'm seeing my takurji, and you're speaking to me and you're with me and everything like that. But I want to see you in Vrindavan, Sakshat. I want to see you in Radhakun, I want to see you in Sevakun, Nidiban, Varsana, Govardhan. So this is, everywhere they're talking about Sporties, when will I get a sporty? When will I get a vision? And then, then we'll know we've got the mercy of Vrindavan. Then we know we've attained the mercy of Vrindavan, the true mercy of Vrindavan, when we actually see Radha and Krishna. 
as I mentioned before, when Brijbasis die, they don't, they don't, when they're burned on the, sh on the whatever it's called, the funeral pyre, they're lying face down, muk down, facing the earth. And they're burned on cow dung, gober, which is not according to Shastra. In the Shastra Niyam, when you burned, you're supposed to lie facing up there, because you want to go there, <laughs> swarga. But their idea is that they want to come back here. But maybe I'm not perfect, maybe I'm not a premi bhakta, maybe I'm not qualified. So, janmantar, janmantar, braj janam, janmantar, janmantar, braj, radha So they have this bhav. So they say, forget about vidhi, we don't care about vidhi, we're bhava bhaktas, we're raganuga bhaktas, we're brajbasis, face down. And I, I'm going to want that also when I'm burned here in Radhakund. I say, please put me face down. I want to come back and burn me on cow dung. <laughs> Go Mata. I want to come back to Radhakund. So this is, uh, this is the Bhav. So we, until, and so we want to keep coming back to Vrindavan and to Radhakund until we actually see Radha and Krishna. And then they say, come, come. Do your seva. You're my kinkari. Now come to your seva. So that's that we want, that we pray for. That's why we live here. So in, he's telling, he quote, they quote in Atika one verse from Vrindavan Maim Amrita, uh, first sataka, first, uh, first sataka, verse 131. He's saying, Oh, most beautiful, glorious forest of Vrindavan. Oh, he's praying, he's praying, oh, Brindavan, oh, Radhakund, oh, Radhakund, oh, Shamakund. He's praying to, in this verse, it's here in the Tika. Oh, Brindatavi, please reveal your most astonishing, blissful, confidential form in my heart. Srimad Brindatavi, Mama Riddhi, Mama Riddhi Sporayatma Sarup. Mat Ascharyam Prakriti Paramananda Divya Marahasyam. Your most astonishing, blissful, confidential form in my heart. This is how he's praying. So this verse, 266, is basic, basically a prayer to Vrindavan. So he's a sadaka. He's telling us we should pray to Vrindavan. Just pray to Vrindavan. Oh, you're we offer dandabats, we offer obeisances. Oh, Vrindavan. <laughs> I remember when, when uh, that Bob, when we'd come from the taxi, first time coming to Vrindavan, I, it's hard to remember those sweet, those sweet, innocent, blissful moments of uh, introduction to Vrindavan. When we, we'd come from the West, I mean, we've been here 30 years now. But when we'd come from, by plane, come to New York, I get in a taxi, and I'm just thinking, Vrindavan, 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 Vrindavan. And then the guy is driving, he said, hurry up, hurry up, you know, and you're so impassioned to get there, you know, and practically strength, and the taxi driver is going 55 kilometers, ambassador, to do, 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 and you're, you're from America, and you go, every day you're going 90, 100 kilometers, you know, <laughs> and you come here, do, 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 you feel like you're on a bullet cart, but your mind, your mind is going like a jet plane, your mind is going as fast as a jet plane to Vrindavan, and your body's going like a donkey. <laughs> like a gutta, you know, do, 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 or a camel, you know. Do. <laughs> so, so you say, come on, jaldi, fat, 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 karo, baba. You know, and then, so then it, since someone told me one time, someone told me, he said, tell, tell him you'll give him 500 rupees if he goes fast. So, so then we did that. We said, well, when the, and it was only 800 rupees tax, you know. They said, look, we'll give you 500 rupees if you go fast. And the guy says, I'll, you know, I'll gladly take your 500 rupees, but if we go fast, this car will fall apart. <laughs> I said, oh, just go as fast as you can. So he went about 80 kilometers, and I, I said, okay, slow down. <laughs> they started shaking and, you know, wildly, oh, my God, what's happening? Doors are falling off. I said, okay, okay, okay. You know, I said, that doesn't work. And I said, he said, what about my 500 rupees? I said, okay, here, take 100. You, you tried. So I gave him 100, you know. <laughs> So it's, so I, the idea is we, we go, we finally get to Vrindavan. So this is the point I want to tell you. 
You're in the car. As soon as you get the Mardavan, you open the car, you, you dive out of the car. You dive out of the car and into Vrindavan. And Dandavats, you know, the men, they lie like this, or ladies like that, whatever you know, they do. And they, oh, Vrindavan. Oh. You have this, anyone has an experience like this? They do like this? Raise your hand. This is the real devotion. <laughs> your hand's down there raised. <laughs> You're too tired for not sleeping all every night. <laughs> you can't raise, she can't raise her head. She lives behind me. And there's all that time, Kirtan. She can't sleep. I can't either. It's okay. So she, she raised her hand like this. She went <laughs> from down there. So this is Bob. This is and, they, and Vrindavan notices that and takes mark of that. You know, Dad, this is good. This is the way to do. Now, now I say, okay, I go over now. I'm a local. I live here. But that very sweet feelings. So very sweet feelings. Or you get in the train. That so you go in the car. Then you just you just drive right. To, you know, guest house. That little alleyway down to the Krishna Balaram guest house and the car the door opens up and these bodies white bodies fly out <laughs> the driver's looking what what's with these guys you know and they just left their cameras or wallets or money belts everything and jumped out you know print oh. it's like be, you know being on fire and jumping in a, in a swimming pool or something your clothes are on fire and you jump in a swimming pool your clothes are on fire oh. So Vrindavan is like that. <laughs> so there's one uh, Padakarta that has a very nice Bengali bhajan that summarizes the content of the Sanskrit shloka of Prabhupada and the Saraswati. I really like the Bengali. I, I, so we'll, we'll just, uh, we have a few minutes, we'll just speak that. Rara para dasi yara sarva bhave jane tara Vrindavana damere mahima Radhara karuna bina Ridayete spurti hoina, Vritta dhyana shesha bhavana, Premamrita sindhu sara, Apara mahima jara, Heno braja damera mahima, Ativa durlava ja, Varnane pravritta ta, Mohbaro adama papi jan, Mohbaro adama papi jan. Rara Paradasi, Rara Paradasi, Ami, 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 Rara Paradasi. Apne, Apne, Rara Paradasi. Apne, Rara Paradasi, Ami, Rara Paradasi. Apne, Apne means you. And he says, Prema Amrita Sindhu. So this, he says, Oh, Vrindavan, you're Prema Amrita Sindhu. You're an ocean of nectarian love. Apara Mahima, Apara Mahima, unlimited greatness and glories. Vrindavan. Brajadamera Mahima. Apara Mahima, Brajadamera Mahima. It's so beautiful. That's you, but what about me? Durlava, Ativa Durlava, very rarely at attained, and I'm Adama, Adama Papijan. I'm Adam, Adam, Adam and Papijan. I'm very low place, and I'm in a very low place, and I'm full of sin. But Radharani, you are. Sabe koro ashirvad, puri be monirasad, kripa koro kripa mahi radhe, kripa koro kripa mahi radhe, kripa koro kripa mahi radhe, karuna mahi radhe radhe, kripa mahi radhe radhe, karuna mahi radhe radhe, kripa koro kripa mahi radhe radhe, prabodha ne. Prabhu Rananda Bhane Radha Dasi Abhimane Dam Spurti Hoka E Hridi. Oh Radharani, please give me your blessings, your Ashivad. Because you're so merciful. Kripakaro, 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 Kripa Mai Radha. You are Kripa Mai. Oh Radharani, you are made of mercy, head to tell your mercy. You have mercy sarup. And I'm begging you, please give me mercy. I'm a kin are you I'm a kinkar. I'm a das, I'm a kinkari, I'm a dasi. And I'm praying for your mercy. Kripa Koro, Kripa Mai Radhe. And, and I have the right mentality, really, I deserve your mercy. What is the right mentality? Without the right mentality, you can't get the mercy. What is the, what is the right mentality? Radha Dasi Abhimane. Radha Dasi Abhimane. This is Abhiman. Abhiman means mentality, the way of thinking, the way of identifying. I'm not a big this or little this or anything this or that. I'm, I'm, I'm Radha Dasi. 
So I, Radha Dasi Abhimani, I have the right Abhiman. I'm ready. I'm ready to receive. Now, Dham Spurti Hoka Hridi. Now the Dham, oh Dham, oh Vrindavan, please manifest in my heart this great mercy of Radharani so I can experience this Premamrita Sindhu Sara, this essence of ecstatic loving ocean of bliss known as Radharani and Vrindavan. Sri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Radharani Ki Jai. Jai Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Jai Shri Radhe, Vrindavan Vihari Lala Ki Jai, Radha Rani Ki Jai. Sab Bhaktagana Ki Jai, Sab Guru Gana Ki Jai. <coughs>